Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to my new series, Five for Five, where I look at five of what I feel are the most effective exercises for each muscle group, explained in just five minutes. Today's video is all about the abs, so let's not waste any more time and get started on the first of our five ab exercises. This is really the gold standard for abs, simply because it adds a small amount of resistance onto the crunch in a very fluid, natural way. Now, when I talk about the movement, all I'm talking about here is the shoulders crunching forwards. So when you look at the action with the rope, the goal is not to pull the rope down to the floor, keep the arms fixed. I've got about a 90 degree bend at the elbows. That stays fixed throughout the movement. And all I'm doing is exhaling, which contracts the abdominals, and then I'm driving my shoulders down. Look at the movement. It allows me to add resistance to this notion of crunching my abs forwards and really engaging them. Exhale as you crunch forwards. Inhale as you open the abs up. And think about the abdominals working instead of the arms pulling it down. In fact, use a light weight, hold the rope with one hand and the other hand on the abs and you can feel the abdominals tense just by contracting the shoulders. These Russian twists are a great way to really work the V formations that really do allow our torso to twist. I like to lean back just a little bit, create some tension in the abs. Whatever weight, play kettlebell you might be holding, keep it at that same distance. We're not extending the arms out, which will bring the biceps into play. And the goal is to rotate the torso around, keeping the hips fixed, touch down on the side, and come back. You wanna get a nice full range of motion while keeping a fluid motion going. So we're not stopping each side, continuous movement, short breaths. And for this, I like to get anywhere from 30 to 50 repetitions in total, which is anywhere from 15 to 25 reps. The abdominals are placed really close to the lungs, so they get reoxygenated much quicker, meaning they can withstand longer endurance. That's why I always do abs at the beginning of my workout and then focus on at least one large muscle group each time I'm at the gym to help keep the abs toned, tight, and ready for whatever's to come. Hanging knee raises, one of the most effective exercises for developing the lower abs. We're drawing the knees up close towards our chest and finishing with a hip tuck. And it's that portion of the movement that is really allowing you to work the lower abs. Look, whether we're looking to get that elusive V formation or just tighten up or develop more of a thicker band in the lower abdominal region, this exercise will help you do that, providing you do it effectively. Start without any weight. In fact, I don't use any weight when performing this exercise. Draw the knees up close towards your chest as you exhale, keep the abdominals tight, and really try to finish by tucking the hips forwards, which is done by the abdominals and nothing else. Watch again. Exhale, knees come up, hips. Push them forwards, driving my knees up towards my chest. And so once again, it's that final action of tucking the hips forwards that allow us to really work this lower region of the abdominals. Cable side bends. This is the fourth exercise that really allows us to work on that lateral flexion. Not so much for function, but for aesthetic. What I'm talking about here are the intercostals, these sort of side finger-like muscles here that seem to sit just outside of the pec and really help frame the abdominals. This is what we work a little bit when we're doing the hang and knee raises, and we start to isolate and target them by doing these cable crunches. Now, I'll say this, this isn't gonna make our hips or waist thicker. What we're training is the actual muscle through its range of motion, and it's a short range of motion. Arm is fixed, 90 degree angle, much like our first exercise doing those high cable crunches. And from here, I'm thinking about taking my elbow down towards my waist. It's this kind of motion. I'm not going all the way down like this. It's a short range just to really isolate and work those intercostal muscles. So abdominal crunches, again, just a great overall exercise for the core. When I talk about coming into the sit-up position, I'm not coming all the way up. In this position, I've completely removed tension from the abdominals. Again, if you keep a hand on them, you can feel them firm, but if you start to lean back, they become involved in this sort of support, in balance, and keeping your torso above the ground and not just falling back down. Great variation with this is change where your hands are. Obviously, up by the temple means there's more weight being lifted or involved with this movement. 
if my arms are out by my knees or crossed over my chest, it's a little bit easier. Again, you can make it even harder by even elevating the feet and keeping tension in the lower abs there, changing some variations, elbow to knee. Again, tons and tons of different variations, all of which I'll include in the description as I'll continue to add new stories and Instagram reels showing all of these additional variations, modifications, and further exercises. All right, guys, that wraps up today's video, five for five, all about the abs. I hope you've enjoyed it and at least found one or two exercises that you're gonna go back and revisit in the gym and find that they can be even more effective than perhaps you were doing before. Also, be sure to check the description as I'll be including more links to new Instagram shorts and Instagram reels, adding further videos, variations, modifications, and new abdominal exercises to continue to grow with this library. All right, until next time, keep training hard, stay focused, stay happy. I'll see you back here on the next 5 for 5. Take care.